Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to take you beyond a simple calculation of a monthly payment on a loan. In previous lessons, I've shown you how to use the PMT function to calculate the monthly payment on a loan. Now, what we want to be able to do is we want to analyze how each monthly payment is a portion. What ratio, what portion of the monthly payment goes towards interest what portion of the monthly payment goes towards paying down the principal. So when we want to find how much of each monthly payment goes towards paying down the principal, we use the PPMT function. When we want to see what portion of each monthly payment goes towards interest charges, we use IPMT. Now, when we want to find for tax purposes, for, for example, how much we paid in interest over the course of a calendar year, we'll use the COM IPMT, cumulative interest. When we want to see cumulatively how much of the principal we've paid down over any period, we use the COM PRINC function. All right, let's see how this works out. Here's our basic loan scenario. We're going to be borrowing $100,000 at an annual interest rate of 6%. Notice that I stressed annual. We're going to be paying it back over 10 years. However, we're going to be making monthly payments. What's important to understand when we use the PMT function is that we need to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So if we're making a monthly payment, we want to take the annual interest rate and divide it by 12 to get the monthly portion of that. If we're paying it back over 10 years, we want to multiply that by 12 months because we're making 12 monthly payments each year. The present value is the amount that we're borrowing. Now, normally I would disregard these two optional arguments. The future value, in other words, after 120 monthly payments, the value of our payment, the value of our loan will be zero. Now, I'm using the type is zero to tell me that I'm making the payment at the end of each month. So I'm making my January payment on the 31st of January. If I put in one or the default, then I would be making it on the 1st of January, the 1st of February. That's going to be important as we follow this lesson through. Now, if I'm a loan officer and I want to make due diligence and I want to tell my client over the course of 10 years, over the course of 120 payments, how much you're going to be paying in interest, this is the function I'm going to use. Cumulative interest that I'm going to be paying will be pointing to the interest rate, which is annual, divided by 12. I'm going to be pointing towards the number of years, multiplying it by 12 because I'm making monthly payments. The start period will be month one. The end period I put in is 120 because I'm paying 12 monthly payments for each of the 12 months over 10 years, 120, and I'm making the payment at the end of each month. So I'm going to pay $33,224.60 to borrow $100,000. That means that I'm going to pay a total of $133,224.60 by adding these two cells together. Now, what if I want to find the component of each monthly payment that goes towards interest, the component of each monthly payment that goes towards principal? These are the functions that I use. Equals I for interest PMT. I'm making a monthly payment. So I'll use the Control A keyboard shortcut and say the interest rate that I'm going to pay each month. Now this is going to vary. So I'm going to point to this cell. I'm going to use the F4 keyboard shortcut to freeze that in place and divide it by 12 to get the monthly portion of that. The period that I'm interested in uh, analyzing is month one. Now I'm going to leave this as a relative reference because the next cell as I copy it down will be month two, month three, so on and so forth. The number of periods will be the years to repay and I want to freeze that in place by using F4 to freeze the column, freeze the row, and I want to multiply that by 12. The present value of my loan, again, I want to point to this cell. And because I'm going to be copying this down in the column, I want to use F4 to freeze the columns and the rows. The future value at the end of 120 payments will be zero. And make sure you click this drop-down navigational uh, bar. 
I want to use zero because I'm making my payments at the end of the month. And I find that this is the gotcha step. Remember to press this down arrow and get the type. All right, click OK. So in the first month, my loan payment of $1,110.21, $500 of that will go towards the interest. And you'll see that each month the interest payment declines. Now I want to see how much of the first month goes towards paying down the principal. Equals P for principal and PMT. And I want to use Control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. So over here, once again, the interest rate, I want to freeze this in place because I'm going to be copying it down, divide by 12. I want to point to the period, but this is going to be a relative cell reference. The number of periods, I point to the years over here, freeze it in place with F4, multiply it by 12. The present value, I want to point to this cell, freeze it in place with F4. At the end of 120 payments, my value will be zero. And remember, remember, remember to use that drop down. The type I'm paying at the end of each month. So I put in there zero. Click OK. Now, what I want to do is I want to have a verification. So I want to use the sum function. And what I need to find is that value, adding up the uh, value of the interest and the principal. 1,110.21 will equal the result of my PMT function. So notice that as I copy this down, I'm paying less in interest more towards the principal, but the amount remains the same each month. All right, now if I want to find out for any period of time, so for example in year one, which is in year 2005, I can use the cumulative interest payment. Now, what's unfortunate in this case is that when I want to come over here to year two, remember in year one, what I did is I, as I went through it, the start period pointed to E8, which was month number one, and the end period, E19, pointed over here to month 12. Well, unfortunately here, I have to actually create two formulas because when I come to the start period, I want to say month one plus 12 the ending month E19 plus 12. So this is one case where I actually have to write two formulas. So here I can see how much might possibly be deductible. In year 2006, I possibly could deduct $5,330.98 of interest on my loan payment. So there you've seen how to use the PMT function, the interest payment function, the principal payment function, the cumulative interest, and the cumulative principal. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.